Mm-hmm. So should we just dive in? <laughs> Crack on. Woo, woo. Let's do it. Yay. Cool. Today's chapter is quasi quotation. Um, I hope I remember everything that I put into this presentation. <laughs> um, good. So yeah, it's it's useful uh, for programming, uh, particularly if you want to generate code. But um, when it's combined with the other with other techniques, tidy evaluation becomes a powerful tool for data analysis. So this was basically in the introduction why what is so, why you need quasi quotation. Um, and I like that he put a little motivation. Um, part in there. <laughs> so why why do we actually need this quasi quotation? Um, and so the, the, the example was basically if you if you want to paste together a string and you use paste and then you have to add every each word that you want to put in there. Um, and if you do that several times, you will be annoyed that you put have to put quotation marks around everything here. So um, he said you could, for example, implement a function called cement that's using here this n sims that we see later on uh, what it means. And you just add all those words in there without the quotation marks and it will give you good morning, Hadley, um, or here, good afternoon, Alice. But um, when you do that, a uh, problem comes when you use variables. Um, so if you if you um, put Hadley to the variable name and morning to the variable time, and then you want to, so if you use paste again, it works without a problem. So you can use these variables and paste and it will give you the stored value of the variables. But for cement, it will just basically quote time and name in here and uh, will tell you good time name. <laughs> So in this case, you would have to, again, unquote this quotation. And you use uh, two exclamation marks for that. And that's pronounced bang, bang. So cement good bang, bang time, bang, bang name will give you then the value that is stored um, in this variable. And you will have good morning, Hadley. So <clears throat> paste evaluates its arguments and we must quote where needed, whereas cement quotes its arguments arguments, and we must unquote where needed. And I found another uh, motivation that actually really motivated me. So I saw in our Slack channel, um, oh, you cannot really read everything of that, but Jake Scott asked something like, um, he had this problem that he uh, put a name to the variable new name and then tried to rename here uh, with this variable and it didn't work. So it just gave you then it gave him the, the var. And I said, ah, that sounds familiar now. <laughs> this must be quotation. And indeed, so Carlo M answered, you can um, use bang bang new variable. So in this case, it would be variable. Um, and then this operator that we will come to next week. Um, and thereby you unquote this variable and you will get the, the value that's stored in there. Um, and I, I tried it, so it's working perfectly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I also read a bit about this uh, um, operator it's also called a wal wal walrus walrus operator apparently because it looks like little walrus <laughs> um but we will come to that i think in next week so i will get into this deeper next week i agree so, that's a very useful uh useful sorry reason. i agree that's a very useful uh motivation good to have that yeah. there. <laughs> because I think I also stumbled uh, over this problem once in a while and I was a bit lost or and then I just copy pasted some answers and now I get it like what does it actually mean to do this yeah 
um, to the vocabulary. So you have evaluation and quotation. So um, an evaluated argument or base are usually evaluation rules. And a quoted argument is captured by the function and is processed in some custom way. And that was already it for the first part. So we had, I think, two exercises here. Um, first exercise for each function in the following base R code, identify which arguments are quoted and which are evaluated. So there was also an example in the text about the library mass and how you would then identify if it's quoted or not. So uh, if you just use library mass without quotation marks, it works. But if you would um, write mass like this, um, it will give you an error. Yeah. So that means that mass is actually quoted inside of library. And that's why this works. Um, did any of you also do these exercises? You want to chime in? <laughs> Can we actually look at the source code of library? Do we see where it does the quoting unquoting? I, I have no idea if that works. Um, okay. Oh gosh, it's, it's really long. Maybe it's not going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, I would have to open another. Um, I just quickly stop this. And you mean just. Yeah, sorry, it's it's so long. I don't know why I didn't think it would be. <laughs> Maybe it's just in the beginning. Oh, it's very long. Oh yeah, my. I was. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, um, I was wondering if we could cool. see it here at the top, maybe somewhere where they do it. His character. Package. Wow. His list. Yeah, I think it's not really in the beginning. Uh. Here's something about quote package name. S quote. Mm. Mm. Like which version of R? <laughs> Platform <laughs> type. Yeah, it's doing a lot. I didn't <laughs> realize that it's doing so much. Yeah, I think it's uh, maybe too long. <laughs> maybe maybe, another maybe. One of the functions will be easier. To... <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, no, I have two. Run this again. Okay. Good. So subset, I think it would uh, evaluate, right? Because you could just yeah. type in the and you get the data set. Yeah. And I guess the same for, for all of these. Ah, but then we have also here the cylinder, for example, would be quoted. Mm -hmm. Because if you just type cylinder, it will not, it will throw an error. The same for the VS and here yeah. this is I think I was initially confused when I looked at this because I just I kind of skimmed over the fact that it was doing a you know double equal sign and thought and just mentally assumed oh so that's the argument name and then the argument is four which is fine but then I realized when I look back at it I'm actually uh, <laughs> not what's happening yeah yeah so that's this um then the second question was for each function in the following tidy worst code identify which arguments are quoted and which are evaluated so i guess it's again the same the library but i don't know if this belongs already to this is uh, quoted. <laughs> um then we have empty cars which is evaluated mm -hmm. uh, again i guess cylinder is Quoted. quoted yeah then mean is a function i guess that's quoted right because it doesn't exist 
outside of being an, a thing for empty cars. The MPG? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I yeah. skipped ahead. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it works like for functions. Do they also follow these this vocabulary? So a function would then also be evaluated or this is outside? I would guess. I don't know. I would think evaluated, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. And ggplot then by sil we defined here, so it's evaluated. Mm -hmm. And then cylinder and mean is again um, quoted. Also, I don't know if I can. Ah, oh, because I have it. Yeah, okay. Never mind. But I think it's clear, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Then we go to quoting. So uh, this is the first part of quasi quotation, um, qu quotation, <laughs> which is basically capturing an expression without evaluating it. And uh, we are going to use the rlang functions here. And later on also uh, he's introducing some base functions, but the base functions are actually only, um, how was it? quoting functions because they don't support unquoting and Arlang also supports unquoting. So there is four main uh, quotation functions in Arlang. Um, for capturing expressions, you can use expr. So expr x plus y would give you the expression x plus y. Um, or this would give you one slash two slash three. So it's always giving you exactly what you put in there, um, except for um, empty spaces and, and comments. Those are kicked out. And um, so this was that what, what's useful for um, if you provide something as the developer, but if you want to capture something that's um, given in the function as an argument, it's not so useful because here in this example, you have um, function of x and then expr x. And if you give um, the argument a plus b plus c for function uh, f1, it will still tell you um, x because it's capturing here the expression of x. And for that purpose, you can then use n, n expr. Um, so that's basically exactly doing the same inside of a function giving you the expression that then a user of this function would, would put in. And if you want to capture multiple arguments uh, inside of the function, you can use an expres. So um, yeah, for multiple, you just add a little s in there. And then this will give you, for example, a list. Um, x is 1 and y is 10 times z. Um, and you can also use expres uh, for the same purpose to capture multiple arguments, but outside of a function. Um, okay, so this was capturing expressions. Yeah, and then um, there's also functions to capture symbols. Um, or actually here's, yeah, nsym and nsyms. Um, and they uh, check that the captured expression is either a symbol or a string. And a string would then be converted to a symbol. So you can, if you use nsyms in this function, um, f of x will give you x. Uh, but also f of uh, the string x will give you the expression x, uh, the symbol x. <laughs> Important difference. OK, for a summary. Um, yeah, I didn't put all the information of the base functions in there because, uh, yeah, he he basically said for each of the Arlang um, functions, there's also an equivalent in base or more or less equivalent. So expr would be quote in base and expres would be a list. Um, and expr would be substitute 
Um, but Substitute also has some other, um, so it's not exactly the same. It's also working some other things. So it's also substituting actually um, um, things in, uh, in like the arguments that you give to it. And then um, if you use as list substitute, you can also use it for multiple arguments like an express. Okay, exercises. <laughs> um, how is Expert implemented? Look at its source code. And we can try, does it work here? So yeah. Uh, so actually the function <laughs> of Expert is an Expert Expert. Right. <laughs> I don't really know what that tells us, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so yeah, or it is like, uh, yeah, it's the, so you use the, the, um, the function that you would use inside of a function to capture an expression with an expression to capture an expression. <laughs> outside of the function. <laughs> what does an expra look like? I'm um, guessing because I just got it. I just opened it up too. It does one of these things where it's like function arg dot call arlang an expr, which makes me think maybe it's written in like C plus plus or something like this huh. or C, but I'm not totally sure. Hmm. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, yeah, there. Uh, and then it's using substitutes for the base. Mm -hmm. Was it the base or? Yeah, it's this for an expert. Yeah, an expert, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but why is it then so different? Or like a little bit different if, if it's actually calling Substitute. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what the other bits are doing. Yeah. Okay. Any more thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no more thoughts. Cool. <laughs> Let's go on to the next uh, next exercise. Compare and contrast the following two functions. Can you predict the output before running them? So, um, unfortunately, I think in, in this here, I cannot just run single functions. Like I can only run the whole chunk, but we can try, I think. So we have function one um, using expers inside of the function capturing x is x and y is y and function two uh, using n expers so this should be relatively simple so i um, guess where it's using expers it's only going to capture that x equals x and y equals y but if it's using n expers then it will capture what you could pass into the function yeah exactly Yep. Perfect. <laughs> oh. Ah, okay. Um, what happens if you try to use an expert with an expression, i.e., an expert x plus one? Um, and what happens if an expert is passed a missing argument? So we can just try that here. X plus y. No, but um, so x plus y would already be an expression without putting it first through x per. Arg must be a symbol. Hmm. Hmm. Because it's not an x. What if you had an x plus? Would it work? So if we put X, oh God. <laughs> I feel like they could have more sayable functions. It's the same. 
What about if you change uh, an extra to have an S on the end? Will that make Inputs difference? to capture must be argument names. <laughs> okay. okay. Like this. It's the same. Okay. And missing argument. I don't know. Or maybe I because we maybe because we're putting them in as a symbol, uh, and they don't represent anything at this stage. So if we had x, if you did like x is one and y is two. Would that help it mean something? Let's try this. But yeah, without the arg must be a symbol. Okay, cool. There's that. There's that idea. It's not that. But then maybe this. No, but it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, fully so understand this. It only works inside of a function. Because if we do this, it will give you x plus y, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's look at protein. <laughs> yeah, maybe it can only be used in a function. I don't know if I wrote anything to that. Maybe we can check. Yeah, I just wrote what happens. <laughs> mm. um, the same is if you use missing arg, it also tells you arg must be a symbol. Even though I tried then a symbol missing arg, and that's true. Um, that's also, it confused me. But maybe because missing arg is one of those special cases. Yeah. Did it, did it have something about it had something that wasn't missing it was like maybe miss that's not maybe missing but it had some missing thing in here didn't it in the last chapter uh maybe it was later on oh maybe it was to them quoting rather than quoting okay so i might be i'm thinking later on mm. so what if you used <laughs> if i quote it like if i put it may in... maybe missing <laughs> <laughs> for the missing uh so using like I mean, Whatever. this is surely not right. Uh, R lang, yeah, maybe you're missing that one. Ooh. And then the arg in the middle. Arg here? Yeah, arg like that. I don't it's possibly not quite what we want, but yeah. Arg must be a symbol. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> I guess we're still doing. So arg must be a symbol. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. So how do we make But that's also because it's just an extra, so it's hard to, it's always going to be the case. X plus Y. So this should work then? No. Uh, how what do about we... if we put it into a function? Or if, or if nsim has nsim's plural thing, I don't know. Uh, like this? No. Oops. Yeah. Because otherwise, then... an expert isn't going to work. Um. So just like an expert, and then of yeah. arg function arg. And then we try f1 of x plus y. Uh -huh. yeah. I think it's working. <laughs> so is it that this just simply works only in functions? Seems to be, right? Yeah. I mean, which would make sense, but I feel like it hasn't explicitly been said. Yeah, so it, it has been said that it is used yeah. inside of functions because the other one doesn't work inside of functions but it has not explicitly been said that it doesn't work outside of functions yeah yeah 
Hmm. I guess it's kind of implied if like, what is it doing if it's outside of function? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So next exercise, how are experts uh, A and experts A equals different? Think about both in both the input and the output. So express A would give you the expression A and express A equals would give you... It's like a missing argument. A missing argument with the name A? Yeah. 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 Um, because express always implies multiples, so it will give you the list and then yeah. you see the name of the um, slot. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So here we have mm -hmm. a symbol as input and output list entry value. And in the second case, we have the name of the argument as the input, and an output would be the list entry name. Cool. Um, what are other differences between experts and a list? Read the documentation for the named arguments of experts to find out. I think I did not do this one <laughs> because I did not care too much about the base uh, yeah. functions. Uh, as he also said that Arlang just is better basically. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did you do that, anybody? I did not. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I think also when I tried to read the documentation, I somehow did not find anywhere something about named arguments. And then I was saying, nah, <laughs> just continue. I'm also not sure if I did this one because it's also based on um, the documentation for substitute says substitution takes place by examining each component of the parse tree as follows. If it is not a bound symbol to env, it is unchanged. If it is a promise object, i.e. a formal argument to a function, the expression slot of the promise replaces the symbol. And if it is an ordinary ordinary variable, its value is substituted unless env is global env, in which case the symbol is left unchanged. Uh, create examples that illustrate each of the above cases. No, I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just never thrilled when it's like, here's a bunch of stuff, just do something for each of them. Especially if he's saying, here are the super cool Arlang fun functions and bases. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, um, maybe we just skip it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the next chapter of hard was unquoting. So this is the second part of quasi quotation, and it is uh, one inverse of quoting. Um, he said there is also another inverse of of quoting, but we will get to that I think in the next chapter. Um. It allows you to selectively evaluate code inside expr so that expr bang bang x is equivalent to x. So um, I'm quoting one argument. Um, this you do with the bang bang. And it works with call objects. So if you say x is expr minus one, and then you say expr would be function of bang bang, so unquoted x. Um, why you would get this um, value, like this expression value that's stored in x instead of x here. So if you if you check out the tree, it then basically um, creates here a new branch where it's retrieving the value for x um, or unquoting the value for x and gives you minus one in this case. So if, you, if we would not have the bang bang here, it would just be f, um, x, and y. Um, and this also works for symbols and, and constants. 
So um, if we have here A is the symbol Y and B is one, we can also use bang bang for A and B here. And then we will get Y and one. So, um, hmm. but in this case, it doesn't create another branch on the tree. I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, but yeah. So this, but this is how, how it works. And you can also use bang bang with function calls. Um, the function call will be evaluated and the result will be inserted. So if we create a function mean um, rm of a function of var, and then we uh, create the symbol var, var um, in this um, function or in this call to expert, we then again have to uncode var so that we get this value. Um, and then um, we can um, use expert to unquote the function mean rm x. Um, which will then yeah go through this function, so it will not give me um, var, but uh, we'll put the x in in here, and then uh, give me x inside of the mean function. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit complicated, but um, you can do that. Um, bang bang also preserves operator pre precedence. So if we have x1 is the expression x plus one and x2 is the expression x plus two, and then we create an expression unquote x1 divided by unquote x2, um, it, will, it will preserve the operator pre precedence of the divide operator and um, create some Parentheses around the um, additions, the two. And if we check out the tree, it yeah, it shows us that first we have the the, the first precedences division, and then we have the two um, expressions inside of that. And if we would not use the um, unquoted ones, but for example, just create an expression of x plus one divided by x plus two. Um, this would be inside here, the one divided by x would be the precedented um, operation. So we have, yeah, first one divided by x and then plus x and plus two. Okay, um, you can also unquote a function so here um, f is expression foo, and then um, we can say we want to have expression uncoded f uh, of x and y. Um, and important here is that you have to use extra um, parentheses around the uncode f, and then it will use this as the function call. So this will generate foo of x and y. And he says here, because of the large number of parentheses involved, it can be clearer to use Erlang call two. Um, I did not like it so much because it's uh, again, in introducing another function to do the, the same thing, but you can use call two and then just say F um, X per X and X per Y. So you, instead of having x and then inside of that, the x and y. Um, you have to put it around each argument, but it will give you in the end the same thing. So it's it's um, basically unquoting f uh, gives you foo and quoting x and y and gives you that as the arguments in there. Um, you can also unquote a missing argument. Um, we said here, we talked about that last in last chapter. 
So this is again the missing arg, and you can then use expert foo arg arg unquote arg and unquote arg. Um, but it gives you an error because argument arg is missing with no default. So, and here's also the maybe missing. Um, and maybe missing works, but then you just have foo without any arguments in there. And um, you can also uncode in special forms. So um, for example, the, the subsetting operator, the dollar, uh, you can also use expert, for example, data frame unquote X. Um, no, you cannot use that because it will um, think that this is the normal exclamation mark like the negation. So if you want to use it with the subsetting um, operated dollar, you would have to use uh, the prefix form of that and say, yeah, prefix, and then you say data frame and then bang, bang, X, and then this will work and give you the expression. Then you can also unquote many arguments um, with bang, 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 also called unquote splice. And um, <clears throat> this then takes a list of expressions and inserts them at the location of the bang, bang, bang. So you can here um, yeah, make a list of expressions, xs, um, where you have a, uh, 1a and minus b. And then you use um, expert again inside of the function. You uncode the x's and you have the y. And it will give you this expression where you have basically yeah, unquoted all of the multiple expressions from up here. And then there was the a nice part, the polite fiction of bang bang, <laughs> which I actually liked, I liked again. So um, you have to be careful if you when you use um, bang bang outside or when you use uh, yeah bang bang outside of an expression context or bang 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 because then they actually just work as the repeated application of the negation operator so the normal exclamation mark so bang bang true would be actually true bang 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 true would be false so it's just yeah if you don't use it inside of the expression context it's just yeah negating and double negating so if you, um, which, and this is, this is where you have to be careful because you can lead to false results. Uh, for example, if you say bang is 1000 and then bang, bang, bang would be true. Um, and you, uh, I don't know if I have it somewhere, but if you, for example, then say one plus bang, 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 it would actually give you two instead of 1001. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, this is what, what comes in actually here. So if you have here a data frame um, with X is one to five and boom is 100. And then uh, you say with data frame X plus bang, bang, boom, it will actually just add one to each of the numbers because bang bang boom is just true and true will be converted to one. Mm. And then we have non non standard AS and I forget what AS stands for. Is that again the abstract syntax? ASTs? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, or some more things to confuse us. Very nice. <laughs> um, for example, if you have, if you inline more complex objects, their attributes are not printed. This can lead to confusing output. Um, so in this case, it's expert um, class bang bang data frame x is 10 and this will 
actually yeah, give us class list um, of x is 10, even though if we evaluate x1, it will tell us this is a data frame. But in here, uh, it says list. So this is a bit confusing. And you can use um, expert print and lobster again to uh, figure out what's happening here. So expert print will then um, basically tell you. I don't know. Yeah, kind of what this does, even though I don't, I don't understand why it's. Well, it's just the abbreviation here, but in the, um, the uh, abstract syntax tree, and at least you have inline data frame. It's telling you there is an inline data frame, um, and I guess this is then um, creating this thing and making everything super confusing. <laughs> um, another example is inlining integer sequences. Um, which in this case here, uh, giving you f of one to five. But if you, um, so it's, yeah, making it compact. But if you use x for print, it tells you actually we have here f of the integers one, l2, l3, l, and so on. And the lobster um, AST also tells you again, this is an inline integer. Yeah. So, he didn't lie here. It really confused me a bit more <laughs> to read about that, but I guess it's also good to keep it in mind that there is some things that um, will not look as you might think they should look like. Good. So we have some more exercises. Um, the first one, given the following components, use cosy quotation to construct the following calls. Um, that was yeah, eight calls. And I think I struggled with some of them. And I even peeked into the solutions, but even in the solutions, it did not look uh, the same as it should look. So then I stopped worrying about it. Um, do you want to go through them or um, see the solutions and go through the solutions? Let's go through like the first three maybe yeah or whichever one you thought like was interesting and difficult mm. yeah i think the first few were a bit more difficult so um i guess the first one because of the um to get the parentheses, oh God. <laughs> um, how was that? I'm a bit blank right now. So I guess we use expert. Um, X plus Y. Uh, uh. It's got the thing which is like given the following components, which in the book um, there are some kind of building blocky. Yeah, yeah. That's why it was confusing now. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I guess I have it in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like looking at being like. Oh, this... <laughs> um. It's already encoding here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So those are the following components. <laughs> um, yeah. Then it makes more sense. So, okay. So we have x, y, which is x plus y, x, uh, x, that, which is x plus that, and y, z, which is y plus z. Mm -hmm. um, so we have here x plus y and y plus that so this would be i guess x per x y x y y z this, this, that. 
Not because I don't know. This. No. We want a bang bang, right? So it's ah, X for bang, bang bang X Y divided by bang bang Y Z. Yep. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Uh, um, this chapter is really funny hearing you're like bang bang boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then this one. Um, this one would be. Um, is it explore? Minus bang bang x. This I think this might might have been the confusing one. So I would say it's this. Nope. Ah, because this does Just not. <laughs> I'm. Super guessing here. What about brackets? Uh, I don't quite, I'm trying to think what the minus is doing. Like this one, just alone. I think this one is the problem, the exponential. The, the, yeah. What if you put both parts in brackets so it was, they were kind of contained? Like I don't, I mean. Yeah, uh, is that what I mean? Maybe. I figured it out at some point and I forgot again completely. <laughs> Should we have a peek? Yeah. Um, so it's this one. Mm. Yeah, so it's just one time the expert, but then brackets around the the unquoted expressions. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't really know if there's like, um, probably there are rules, but I feel like I was just trying out the <laughs> whole time, basically. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it kind of feels like the kind of thing where like yeah there are probably rules and so like either you'll do it loads and then you'll like it's the kind of thing that you'll get used to like exactly how it works or yeah. like the once or twice that you end up needing to do it it's fine to just experiment until it works yeah I don't know whether that's the advanced art mindset but <laughs> Keep trying until you don't fail. <laughs> Inspirational. <laughs> yeah. So I remember, I remember this one. Um, that was the one that I didn't manage to um, produce in exactly this way. X plus Y plus Y plus Z. Y. Because always. Um, so maybe I can just. So. Um, bang, bang. So I guess we can also put again here parentheses around. Can that X plus Y be X, Y? Um, yeah. Sorry? The third X, argument X at the end. Y. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I doubt that'll be the difference. Yeah, but the problem is that the first one is oh. get the parentheses, and I don't know why. And also, I checked here for this. I checked the solutions, and mm -hmm. it. I think it was actually the same. Um, what I I wrote here, they put in the solutions, but also in their output, it looked like this, so they didn't have the parentheses oh. around the first. Huh. What so if you I, use a parenthesis as like, you know, a function, like use it as a um, 
prefix function. I don't know quite know how. Around yeah, like that. Back ticks, and then you would not have that one. I think I tried it, but it also yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, or maybe do that, that, and then do, but then do brackets. So, uh, and then bracket. Yeah. But maybe we still need a another back tick. Yeah, sorry. I mean, this is definitely not the answer, but um <laughs> no. uh, oh, come on. <laughs> I thought yeah. I didn't think it would do the same. <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah, I played around with that one a bit, but I, I really I could not find a way to do it. Well, that could be a fun one to ask the group. Yeah. <laughs> But then when I looked at the solutions and I also didn't have it, I, I thought, yeah. okay, I'm yeah. relieved yeah. that it's not just me. And <laughs> oh, weird. Because weird that it works for the other, like the kind of, it's not like it's just a thing where like the first one, they strip it or whatever. Because for the one with two arguments, they work with the brackets. So I, yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. Maybe if we have another operator here, yeah, then you get the oh, yeah, interesting. But somehow maybe it's to do with operator precedence. But I mean it seems like it that isn't what it would do because it's like yeah, it should not be stupid. But maybe it's just case. trying to like it's like, oh well, this is the same as writing plus 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 plus. Yeah. But that doesn't really but... seem like how it would work. So yeah. I mean, also, it, yeah, it doesn't make sense that it then put the parentheses around this, these two, the last two. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. yeah. Um, we no, just it does because, no, then it would still make sense because the might, then it'd be minusing a bigger number if it's got the brackets, whereas if it doesn't have the brackets, it would minus it and then it would plus the number. So the brackets do make a difference there. Whereas the brackets in the first one literally Ooh. don't make a difference. True, true, true. I still, but I still feel like nowhere has it said. No, it does it? Brackets will get ignored. If we have here. <laughs> it's either minus, say one plus two, so then it's minus three, or it's mm -hmm. minus one and then it's plus two. So then that would be plus one. Yeah, that's true. So the brackets do matter there. So, me but, but I, I don't. I'm not very satisfied by that because I don't feel like that's been expressed anywhere. And you would also think there'd be a kind of a way to overwrite that if that was what it was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh well. Maybe we just check through the rest or I just quickly go. I think the rest was basically um, relatively easy. So it was all function calls mm -hmm. and then have the um, bang bang as arguments in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Easy, the rest. Um, I don't know how many exercises were there. As just the two. Okay, then we're I good in the time. Um, the following two calls print the same, but are actually different. Um, yeah, so we have here um, A is expr mean 1 to 10, and we'll give you the expression mean 1 to 10, and B is expr mean bang bang one to ten which will also give you the, the expression mean uh, as one mean of one to ten but if you check then if they are identical they are not mm -hmm. and i then i put this into like use those two functions to see what's going on here so if we have expert print a it is mean one to 10, but if we have expert print B, it is mean of the integers one to oh, three. It's actually, mm -hmm. actually done the, yeah. So we have in the first case, just the like, yeah, one to 10, but if we uncode one to 10, it will be like an inline integer. Mm. 
And I don't know, the question was, what's more natural? <laughs> I, I, for me, it feels like the first case is more natural. Um, yeah. yeah. But I would also not be able to explain why it's just Like, well, I mean, I think that's a bit of a subjective thing, isn't it? But I guess like it, it doesn't have as much going on. It looks so it feels like, like you would also write it in... A... And you're capturing, it's more like you're still capturing like the idea rather than... Yeah. Like yeah. Having had something happen. Yeah. And that's it for tomorrow, uh, for today. Oh God, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> that's it for today um <laughs> cool i Ooh. hope i will be <laughs> better next week um yeah, that's good cool then yeah to the second part of quasi quotation next week mm. thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> that was great i also don't know how the other groups did all these in like one week there's so much stuff here and i'm like <laughs> this is so hard. Oh, no. I think they did do they did split some but I don't know. Okay. I think they did say they started splitting stuff up, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I I listened to the talk of Maya on the R Studio Global com and I think she mm -hmm. also said something that at some point they they stopped just presenting and they started to um try to implement it the stuff that they have in the chapters and then present what they did in the implementations. Maybe I should check out their YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Check out what they did in metaprogramming. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Maybe we'll <laughs> learn something. Cool. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. See you next week then. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>